people. So today we will be going in the wilderness and we will go with the wildlife expert Frank Rizzi. Let's just uh, see who Frank is and then we will see what the plan is for today because to be honest I don't really know so much about the wilderness life. But yeah, this is why we're here. We're here always to learn a little bit more. Uh, anyways, let's say hi to Frank. Okay. <laughs> Good morning. So we're heading off into the wilds. Well, not really wild, but as wild as it gets 20 minutes from Merritt. What are we going to do? We're going to put out some trail cameras and see what type of wild animals might be around. Karma, come here. Come. And we're going to have our dog Karma with us. And she's going to entertain us by climbing on rocks and logs and stuff. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get our bear spray. We always carry our bear spray in a, a special container, but you want to have this with you, seeing as how there's lots of bears in the area, and they have been eating my trail cameras for the past couple months, and they don't want them to start eating us. So I carry bear spray with me, and so here, if you can see there, this is one of my cameras and a bear's bitten right into it. But it's, it's still working. We're going to put her back out. So do you know how to wrestle with the bears? Uh, yes, the big thing is, is you take somebody along with you who doesn't know much about the wilderness, and when the bear comes, you push him over, you leave, and the bear gets your friend. Huh, I wonder who's your friend. <laughs> And I think we're good to go. Okay, so where exactly are we now? We are on what they call the Lundbum Common Edge. And this is a part of the grassland ecosystem near Merritt, BC. We're going to go walk, see if we can find some big trees and uh, maybe put out some trail cameras. Let's go. So it's really neat when you come out here starting in the springtime through to well throughout the year there are different flowers come up at different times so it starts with uh, the sage buttercups and a thing called spring beauty and that's actually got a little potato underneath it and right now all this uh, white flower that's uh, yarrow these blue flowers that's uh, lupin purple one here what they call a sticky geranium if you know your plants there's a, a whole smorgasbord and pharmacy out here that bird that just took off it's got eggs here see the nest we won't we won't stay long just see that so I think that was a little Vesper sparrow that took off we can't stay too long because it's cold out and she's got to get back on top of the eggs. You're such a good dog. Do you know what caused this? So right here, what we've had, there's a bear came through here, lifted the rock, rolled it down and he was looking for ants or bugs. And we know this is recent because this grass that had grown up is pressed down by this rock. So there's a bear, it's been here. It's probably been more than a day. It's wet underneath there, so it isn't like it just happened. But we know that there's bears in the area, and that's why we've got the bear spray and we keep the dog close to us. Looks like he, that's a, a bedding area. And you can see where he's bedded down in on the side there. There's something cool. There you go. That's so what animal is this from? Oh, this would be the, the very rare uh, cow bone. Some type of bovine, but that's a, a pretty hefty, hefty bone. So this used to be a bear dinner? <laughs> a bear might have scavenged it. But there's lots that can happen to an animal out here. You know, sometimes they just die. 
of natural causes and then all the wild animals would scavenge it. It's designed as a chair. Perfect, right karma? So this tree here, this is a Douglas fir and this tree would be in around 400 years old. So just a little bit older than I am. And these trees are really important for a lot of reasons. One of the things is, is they do, uh, when they teach children survival training for the woods, the thing is hug a tree. So if you come into a tree like this, and you stay here, you'll notice even though it's been raining all night, perfectly dry right here. So if you were to hug into a tree like this, you're going to stay warm and dry. It is, this tree will protect you through the, the night. But the other thing with Douglas fir, if you look in close here, you can see all the fire scarring on these. These things, fire can burn through here and these will still be standing. They're very fire uh, resistant or tolerant anyhow. Oh. But we've got that mass of Douglas fir and then right over here, we've got a, a dead uh, yellow pine tree like this you don't want to spend much time underneath because one of those branches fall out you're, you're going to be pretty flat. But now that it's dead it has a lot of value as well because the cavity is up there, the owls like to nest in there, the smaller birds like the oh the red-breasted nuthatch nests in there, a lot of the woodpeckers will nest in there. So even though it's dead it still has a lot of value. Hey, Karma, look. Oh yeah, that's a beauty. Just need a, an ax in your hand and you'd look every bit the logger. So here is scat of some type of canine. You can see that there's hair in it. So it's probably coyote, although it's pretty big for a coyote. There are wolves in the area, so it could be a, a wolf. So I just wanted to show you this little flower here. This is columbine. And you'll notice right on the end there, there's those little nodules. And they're filled with nectar. And as kids, this was a big treat. We'd take these and then you bite into them. And they're super sweet. It's like nectar, like honey in the bottom of them. Did you want to try one? Sure. And as a general rule, it's not a good thing to eat something that your friend just hands to you. So wait till, <laughs> wait five minutes, see if he dies from it. But here, try one of those. So just put the thing in my mouth? No, no, no other side. Oh. Right there, see those little? Oh, the bubbles. Yeah. So just chew on the bubbles? Yeah, just bite those off. Can you taste the nectar in there? Hmm. Nice. You'd have to eat a lot of those. <laughs> this is, uh, this lichen is really, really important for the deer in the winter time. This is what they, a lot of them survive on uh, because in the winter this is all covered in snow, not a lot of food for them. But the deer come in and they'll eat these lichens and that's why these older forest stands really important for the deer to survive the winter and if you log those and take away the winter food supply no more deer and also those mountain caribou you've probably heard about this is the type of thing they need as well as they need the lichens so we'll put that back deer can eat it this this winter so if you come in here and look lots of bear claw marks on here. 
one of the bears comes here. Oh, it's a big bear. So he's been clawing on here, rubbing on here to let the other bears know that he's in the area. So do the bears have like a little piece of their own land or they're just sharing with the group? Uh, yeah, so bears have what's called a, a range. They don't have a territory that they defend and the bear ranges can overlap. So they're not like they defend a piece of land. They're very laissez-faire about it. You know, you can come in, I can go out and it's it works well until there's a shortage of food and if there's a shortage of food they'll protect their their food source so but what we're going to do make sure she's good to go and I'll use that tree so I can and this thing has a motion sensor so anything walks in front of it will set off the the camera Hopefully he doesn't bite it again. It's, I've lost three cameras to bears this spring. So. Yeah, it doesn't look so tasty. <laughs> well, to a bear, everything is tasty. Now, what we have to do is make sure it's pointing in the right direction. So we go back to here. Whoa, I am good, that's perfect. Okay, so I will try to mimic the view. Actually, I don't know how wide the camera is. But there you can see Frank Bear. This will be a good one. And it has a very wide field of view. Now we leave it, come back in a week, two weeks and see what we've got. Okay, so we don't have footage yet from this specific place, but let me show you some other bear video from Frank. Okay, let's continue our journey. You know, you can spend your entire life in an area hiking around and still find new things to discover. The lower you have it, the bigger the animal looks when it comes up to the camera. Now I go back here. Padding down, down, down. A lot of the animals you're looking to get, the, if a bobcat were to come by here, a bobcat would be maybe as tall as Karma. And if your camera's too high, it walks right under it. And if they're coyotes, they're again, karma size, the wolf a little bit bigger. So you want to keep the camera fairly low. And uh, the only downside to it, if you get a moose walk by, all you get are the knees on the moose. It's a trade-off. Something like this. Oh, and I got some other really nice trail cam video of a deer with three little babies. Apparently it's not so common. I think I see a log up there. What's that log? These are neat plants. This is, this is a tiger lily. And you can see where it gets the name tiger. From the orange and black there. Look up there, oh. the rare tree dog. So this is what they call a nursery log and it's really, really neat. See this little spruce trees growing out of the, the log and then these little fir trees are also starting. And look at these cool mushrooms. I don't know if you can zoom, zoom in on that, but this, this, log has become an entire little ecosystem and it's got some these really neat uh, cup uh, fungi I think they're fungus they might be a lichen maybe anyways they're really really neat all the little seeds fall down on here and they start growing 
and by the time this becomes a, a big tree this will have fallen right down into the ground and it'll grow up. It's one mini ecosystem. Yeah. I have a friend who's a mitocologist, someone who studies mushrooms and fungi, and I always like to get pictures of them. What's important are how the gills are attached, and some mushrooms don't have gills. Pick these mushrooms, and they'll take a mushroom like that, and they'll They'll put it up in the tree to dry and then they've got that mushroom in the uh, in the winter time and I've seen where the squirrels have put mushrooms all through the trees and then the deer come by and eat <laughs> eat the squirrels mushrooms. It's tough being a squirrel. So people congratulations you have just finished watching part one so stay tuned for part two because we will you know have some nice footage of a hawk and then we will have some nice drone footage and interview with Frank on how to survive in the wild. See you then. Oh and don't forget to hit a like button and the subscribe button with the bell button. Anyway see you next time. <laughs> This would be the, the very rare uh, cow bone.